With team number three, the company that we've selected is Johnson & Johnson. I'm Kyle Brown. I'm Gabriella Villalobos. I'm Wes McBride. I'm Brad Romar. And I'm Cole Fowler. Johnson & Johnson is one of the largest companies in the world. Many people have used their products, whether you realize it or not. If you ever use a Band-Aid, Johnson Johnson took care of that. Uh, however, they are a great case study of uh, what to do when things go wrong, when your company grows uh, too large to be able to control everything. Uh, so what we're going to look at with Johnson & Johnson is uh, getting back on top by uh, avoiding common pitfalls, uh, public relations 101, and learning how to fix a damaged rep reputation. Johnson & Johnson is a household name. Most people don't just know the name, but also the products they make and sell. According to their website, the three brothers, Robert, James, and Edward Johnson, established this company in New Brunswick, New Jersey in 1886. Through the years, they've established many firsts, including the first ever medical aid kit, the first maternity kit, and also introducing Band-Aids. Some other well-known products of theirs is Listerine, Zyrtec, Benadryl, Band-Aid, Motrin, and Tylenol. One of their more notarized products is the, ba is the baby powder or talcum powder, whatever you know it as. However, within the recent few years, there's been a discovery that they've actually been using cancer-causing substances. As you can imagine, it's created quite an issue for Johnson & Johnson, and today we'll be discussing what they can do to affect that and what they can do to change what they've done. So the, di the diagnosis section for Johnson & Johnson is what it mainly pertained to the discovery of asbestos and one of their well-known products, their baby powder. According to the article, Asbestos Exposure and Cancer Risk, asbestos is a mineral that occurs naturally in the environment as bundles of fibers that can be separated into thin and durable threads for use in commercial and industrial applications. Asbestos has been used in a variety of industries such as shipbuilding and construction. Health hazards of asbestos can cause cancer, and many lawsuits have been brought up causing many people's cancers. Breathing in asbestos fibers can cause a buildup of scar-like tissue in the lungs called asbestosis and result in loss of lung function that often progresses to disability and death. It can also cause cancer of the lung and other diseases such as mesothelioma of the pleura, which is a fatal malignant tumor of the membrane lining and the cavity of the lung and stomach, which was found in the Department of Labor's website. So Johnson & Johnson, they violated a very important ethical issue, business ethics. Business ethics is the application of general ethical principles to the actions and decisions of businesses and the conduct of their personnel. So business ethics can greatly affect many aspects of Johnson & Johnson's business, such as customer satisfaction, trust, and can result in decreased sales. Johnson & Johnson, they're currently being sued by several plaintiffs who claim that their cancers were caused by Johnson & Johnson products containing talc, which is found in their baby powder and in some of their shower products as well. They are facing roughly 13,000 lawsuits. Many plaintiffs' lawyers have fought to keep cases out of federal court, which they feel favors corporate defendants, such as Johnson & Johnson. The cost of settling and hiring a legal team for court cases is costly and will most likely cost Johnson & Johnson millions, if not billions, of dollars. Additional costs Johnson & Johnson may incur during the asbestos scandal is loss of reputation, government fines and penalties, cost of taking corrective measures, customer detection, and the cost of complying with even harsher government regulation. So the examples that I just listed, these are just a partial list of some of the costs that they can incur. Many customers that were once loyal to Johnson & Johnson will most likely fall away and spread to other people that were once loyal consumers of the brand just because of this one scandal. So the next point I'm going to talk about is the violation of sustainable business practices that Johnson & Johnson has well violated. Um, talc was first found in the 1950s, and that was when the FDA, they were kind of trying to crack down on asbestos in some of like makeup products. Um, and during the 70s was when they first found some asbestos in their talc powder. So Johnson Johnson assured the regulator that no asbestos was detected in any sample of the talc produced between December 1972 and October of 1970. So that quote just shows that Johnson Johnson has had talc in, or has had asbestos in their talc starting in the 70s and the 50s. 
and that it has continued to go on through the present, which in, we are now in 2019. So rather than saying that they're saying that their talc might contain asbestos, they continue to say that there is no asbestos in their talc in any of their products. And they could have just avoid all the legal litigation just by, um, just by putting a warning label on it. As a company in the medical field, people's health should be a priority for Johnson & Johnson in all their business aspects. Um, they're not meeting the needs of the future if they're continuing to take shortcuts for profits by sacrificing the health of their consumers. So, and now the next point I'm going to touch on is the abandonment of corporal, corporate social responsibility, um, specifically pertaining to the triple bottom line component of respect for people, which they have definitely violated because they are probably one of the contributing causes to people's mesothelioma. Um, Johnson & Johnson over-delivered to their stakeholders by not taking proper precautionary measures for their top products. Now they are paying the cost for letting their malproduction continue on for decades. Um, Johnson & Johnson, they knew that their asbestos often occurred together in the earth and that sometimes the top can be contaminated with asbestos, yet they continue to do so and continue to produce baby powder in their shower products. Upper level management knew that the powder can become contaminated, yet they continue to do nothing and continue production as it always. All in all, Johnson & Johnson has definitely done some many, many wrong things and that they have a lot of fixing that they need to do in order to become the, the brand and the respected brand that they once were. As far as solutions go for Johnson & Johnson to fix their problems, they have two main routes they can go. They can have a temporary route, which basically involves slapping a band-aid over their boo-boo, or you can go the permanent route and get in there, uh, have surgery on the problem, and really uh, fix it permanently. By the way, Johnson Johnson makes, uh, produces band-aids and surgical equipment, so they can do either one, literally. So the temporary solution for Johnson Johnson when it gets to companies of this size, it'd be very easy for them to try to sweep it under the rug. They can pay their dues and not really apologize to the public, ignore their PR scheme, and they can keep going because they're big enough and they got enough money to survive as the company that they are. And now, while that might help their bottom line in the short term, over time, the, if these events keep happening and they keep handling the same way, then it's going to inevitably keep stacking up on them. They're going to lose consumer confidence. People aren't going to trust the company anymore. They're going to be viewed as an unethical company, which is going to hurt their bottom line, and eventually people are going to stop buying them. However, if they go through a, for a permanent solution, where they really get in there, go, to, go into surgery, cut up everything that's wrong, you know, recycle their product, recycle their ideas, get everything moving uh, more efficiently, that could really uh, help their uh, company in the long term. Now in the short term, however, it end up hurting their bottom line because it's going to be expensive. They're going to have to go through their, uh, for, to fix their top product, they're going to have to go through different facilities, they're going to have to get their sourcing, uh, change their sourcing for it, uh, they're going to have to go through uh, more rigorous testing and uh, product control, quality control. But in the end, it's going to uh, turn into larger revenues because people are going to begin to trust the company again uh, because the products aren't, frankly, giving people cancer. Uh, another thing that they can do, uh, along with the permanent solution, is reach out uh, with PR, uh, public relations, and really let people know what's going on. Be open, transparent, and honest with what's going on with their company. Because there's nothing that people hate more than a giant corporation with an agenda that they like to hide. This is pretty evident uh, after the market crash of 2008 with all the too big to fail financial institutions. Many people lost faith in the financial industry and it's just as easy for them to lose faith in any other industry. Uh, it could happen to Johnson Johnson just as easily if they aren't careful. One uh, great uh, example of how to handle a, a negative uh, setback for a company can be seen by ExxonMobil in the uh, 1990s, they had the Valdez oil spill, which dumped millions and millions and millions of gallons of oil into the ocean. And immediately, they took the permanent solution, uh, chose to take the long road to improve their bottom line in the long run. 
they paid over $4.5 billion to fix, to clean up, fix, and uh, basically remedy all the issues that were surrounding, surrounded their uh, mess up. And it ended up uh, helping their company continue to grow and stay successful instead of trying to sweep it under the rug and uh, move, uh, you know, hang on, and move in a way that would people would lose respect for the company. Uh, in the end, there's really only two solutions, uh, two ways that Johnson Johnson can go. They can go the temporary or they can go the permanent. And 10 times out of 10, we recommend that they should take the permanent route because it affects their bottom line. Uh, in the long run, they're gonna be a more successful company and they can really get back on top. Uh, so now we'll get into the action portion of the presentation where Johnson & Johnson will follow these steps in order to reclaim some of their trust in their customers. Uh, first off, they need to admit to their misuse and accept the accountability of the mistakes that they've made. And then next, they need to restore the grievances with those who were directly affected uh, by the asbestos uh, products. Um, and then they need to demonstrate to their customers as well that the people are more important than making money as well as increase their investment in research and development, uh, which that they have already started doing by being the industry leaders by investing $10 billion into research and development. Um, and then they need to com uh, provide complete transparency of their ingredients and in all their products so all their customers feel safe when using these products. Continuing, they need to eliminate the use of asbestos in any of their um, talcum products. Moving on with these action steps, uh, they need to conduct quarterly inspections on all their products and release that information to the public. Therefore, again, so their customers know that the products that they're using are safe. Uh, they need to provide uh, employees with training so they know what products are har harmful to humans, as well as uh, create a transparent database within the whole company. Um, and then also create a web page on their website where consumers can uh, comment their concerns, therefore Johnson & Johnson can take that into consideration. Um, they also need to create ad campaign, campaigns to assure the safety of their products. Um, and then finally, I think it would be a good idea for them to donate money to a multitude of different cancer foundations for those who have been affected or gotten cancer from the asbestos-based products. Uh, following these steps will provide Johnson & Johnson with a path to re reclaim the majority of their reputation. While it will take time and be a tedious process, but it is the correct way to do things in the long run. Uh, to regain these customers that they have lost, uh, they must hold themselves accountable for the mistakes that they've made and uh, try to correct those for the future. So I'll be presenting over the evaluation phase. Johnson & Johnson needs to collect and analyze data. This data will help them evaluate whether their action they implemented is successful or not. This will, in the end, help them regain the support of their consumers and once again be a household name uh, brand. There are four different standards that they will, there are four different criteria that they will measure this on. The first one being quality control. Quality control, they need to set specific standards and processes for their products. Doing this will not allow them to have harmful carcinogens in their products. During this, um, Johnson & Johnson will not be able to harm any of their consumers. Uh, this will once again uh, bring loyalty back to other consumers, knowing that their products are safe. The next is have appropriate business ethics. In the beginning, Johnson & Johnson's top managers knew that they had these harmful carcinogens in their products. As their top managers knew that if they had these harmful carcinogens in their products, this uh, provides this is disregarding uh, appropriate business ethics. Uh, this starts at their top managers and goes funneled down all the way throughout their company. Giving this negligence of the knowing that they had this asbestos in their products gives the consumers a bad rep, gives them a bad rep for their consumers. Consumers are Johnson Johnson's main priority. Um, not having consumers allow John, or doesn't allow Johnson Johnson to be a top competitor in their industry. The next thing Johnson Johnson needs to do is provide complete transparency of their company to the consumer. Doing this allows them to uh, once again regain the top prior or top company at, in their industry. Being transparent to the company, one, 
uh, example is to create a database that inside the company that will be completely transparent to the public. Uh, this could include their quality control standards, which allow the public to be able to see what is in their products and what they make their products with. This is not only done with their baby powder, but Johnson & Johnson needs to do this with their other products as well. Uh, Johnson & Johnson also needs to be transparent with their business ethics. They need to provide the information to the public to prove that they have done something about uh, reporting this business ethics to make sure their company is practicing it appropriately. Next is immediate action. Johnson Johnson top managers, once they see something is going bad within their company, they need to take immediate action. Um, like Brayden said earlier in the presentation, Johnson Johnson tried to sweep this under the rug. Taking immediate action shows the consumers that they care about their products and their safety for their consumers. This will once again allow Johnson Johnson to be a top competitor in the industry and have to bring the loyalty back from their consumers. up in regards to Johnson & Johnson. And those are focusing around the violation of business ethics, abandonment of corporate social responsibility, and their, via their violations of sustainable business practices. After identifying these issues, the proposed approach to these issues to truly help character, no, I'm not gonna pause until I say that. This case analysis has been broken down into four separate steps, diagnosis, solution, and evaluation. The diagnosis portion of this actually discusses the issues and the complications that Johnson & Johnson have actually had to deal with, with following the lawsuits that they've had. Additionally, they're going to talk about the different practices and whatnot we can fix to fix the issues and make sure it doesn't happen again. The following portion was the solution where we talked about how we're going to fix what they messed up. Essentially, not just take ownership, but also continue to figure out a plan of what we would be able to do to counteract what we've already done. The next portion after that would be the action. That's taking the solution that they've established and putting it into play actually taking the plans that they've had to reform whatever production they've had and actually putting it into place rather than just saying they're going to do it. The action is very important because that's going to help to bring back customers that they've lost because they're taking ownership and actually saying we've messed up but we're trying to fix it. The last portion that we're going to discuss is about the evaluation and that's taking the action and actually figuring out was it successful? Did we do what we were trying to do? Did it accomplish the goals that we've established? Following that, with the research and everything that we've done, we can conclude that if Johnson & Johnson were to kind of take the approaches that we've suggested and continue to do what they've been doing and continue to do the correct thing, they will not only just be successful, but will come back from being in the dark light and continue to be a good, well-recognized company. Right, so now we're gonna take a look at the four discussion questions that we've prepared for you guys. Uh, the first one is, what is a major company in recent history uh, that has a large scandal, and what did that company do to remedy that situation? Um, question number two is, from the consumer standpoint, what values and competencies make certain companies more valuable to you personally? Uh, just try and think of one of your brand loyalties and discuss why you're loyal to that company. Question number three, uh, do you think government intervention is necessary to monitor the actions of large corporations? or are you in favor of letting the market weed out the quote unquote bad companies? Uh, and then our last one to wrap things up is, in your eyes, what is one company that you believe had the most harmful scandal of all time and why? Uh, like, like we said earlier, we're group three and we wanna thank you for listening to our presentation.